Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. This is lesson two of the Hackaday three-day event. If you've been following along, you've gotten three PDFs, one full on Zoom, and lots of information coming to you through the Facebook page. But what I really want to talk to you about tonight is the nitty gritty. Tonight is Crossroads Night. It is the Feast of Hecate Night, Night of Hecate. This is the night that everyone is observing, okay? If you are not ready, do not panic. This is not the end game. We have a dark moon on Tuesday night, which is the 15th. A dark moon to an absolute fiesta, feast, cotillion, debut of a triple Leo moon. I cannot tell you how important finishing this up is going to be to you before the 16th. So at 5.38 in the morning on the 16th, we have a new moon. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are we ready? I'm ready, okay? And in this new moon, I want you to pull on some amazing Phoenix energy. If you took a workshop with me called Phoenix Rebirth, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. There are PDF prompts for that. It was a program we did. What I'm going to do is synopse some of those for you and you'll all get those for the new moon. Maybe some things to think about when you're launching into a new version of yourself. But this is the time to rebirth, reboost, reburn it all down to become what you want to be. But first, before we do that, we need to finish this quest we are with mom. So as always, let's start ourselves Get a little energy going in this space. Get a little oh, up in this place. And let's call in mom. So we have a soft circle going right now. Right hand down, left hand up. We are still sitting in this soft sacred circle. You have been in this circle since Thursday night if you've been with me. So we are still together. I'm not going to close it till dark moon. So dark moon night, you will get a Zoom link. It will probably be like 8.30, 9 o'clock. And we will get together we will chat a little bit about what we've done, talk a little bit about some of the things you're worried about, like a little round circle time to chit chat, okay? And dare we say a dark moon slumber party? I like a slumber party. <laughs> okay, so let's call mom in right now. Hecate in your wiseness, your effervescent zeal for life and our craft, I ask you forward to join us in this magical place, this magical space, this one moment in time, this liminal divide where we seek you on this holy night for you at the crossroads. Hopefully many will be bringing you an offering tonight. Many will be giving you an invocation. Many will be paying you the respect of which you deserve. Ah, so in everyone, yes, this, that, all in this spell container. So let's move forward. What are we doing? Let's recap this lesson two PDF I gave you. What's your purpose? How can you grow spiritually? What are your passions? What are your core values? And how can you use all this to be positive? Those were the prompts you're supposed to examine. So basically, what do you believe? Where are you pushing to in your life? What has been holding you back? And what about these core values do you not envelop any longer? So core values are taught when we're young, okay? As we grow older, we move them along, okay? And when I say move them along, we make decisions and things to change our core values, okay? So core values are, in the Christian term, commandments, things we believe. But as you get older and you seek into the pagan faith, your core values change slightly. Like, don't be a dick. Don't steal. Don't treat people bad. All those things, okay? We drop off. Do not put another, no God before the senior God, all those things. Here, we believe in many gods. We believe in many goddesses. We believe in everyone linking up to move forward. So in this essence, how are those core values holding you back? Those Preconceived notions about morality, stability, worship, deity alignment. How are they holding you back? Because I find even people with a religious wound, a church wound, come into the pagan craft still with a church wound. Oh, if I have, if I have Hecate, I can't work with anyone else. That's ridiculous. 
She's a crossroad goddess. Her goal at this crossroad may to show you, hey, here's Anana. Hey, here is Kali. Hey, here is Demeter. Here is Persephone. These are the goddesses that maybe align better for you. She's kind of like tour guide Barbie of the underworld. She's going to show you where you can go. And she's going to say, you can stay here. I'm okay with you here. Or over there, you're going to learn a lot more. So you have to be able to understand adjusting your path and moving into something different, which is something I love for us. So let's become more flexible. I don't want you to become limp. I just want you to become a little wavering. So if you ever look in the fields right now, this time of year, goddess of harvest and reaping, the corn, when there's a huge storm, blows back and forth. And it is full of fruit right now. It has large corn cobs on it. It's ready to go. Not quite ready to harvest in all cases, but in most cases, it's wavering back and forth. It has a good root base. You have a good root base. You have a good base in your life. You just need to learn to be a little more flexible in your magic and move a little harder. If you're too stern and you're too burdened, you will break. Case and example, I have a beautiful apple tree in my yard. Too burdened, too strong of a wind, it broke. A crisis came along. It was not able to release all that it was feeding and nurturing, and it snapped off. And now that tree is a casualty. It has a casualty. It needs to be trimmed. It needs to be arranged. Some of you are sitting in a casualty-prone lifestyle. You are so burdened with everything you're carrying and all the things that you want to accomplish and all the things you want to do that you overburden yourself and you prepare yourself for death. And when I say death, I don't mean, I mean spiritual death. You're going to die a spiritual death because you don't know how to step away, release, and move back in. And this invocation time, I really want you to sit in this. So when you're writing these clear definitions of your core values, your purpose, how you want to make a better impact on the world, think about all these things. But also look at that basket you're carrying and see how heavy it is. And if that basket is too heavy, it is time to let things go by. Sometimes you just have to unload your basket and just take what you need. Think about it as you only have a prepaid card to go on this journey. You only can afford to take five burdens with you to this crossroad. You're going to have to get rid of a lot of extra burdens. And I know you're all carrying way more than five burdens, okay? Case in point, I know where you're coming from. I know it hurts like fucking hell. But we need to make choices. This is a choice-driven night. No, you are a victim. Yes, you have a choice. And I love that we have this choice. So let's make these choices count. So what's the plan from right here? Right here, right now, this is what you got last night. Write your declaration of intention. You should have pages of intention. Pages. Have you prepared your offering? Some of you are like, I don't know how to do an offering. Hold up. It's okay. We have time. Where is your crossroad? You have to decide that. Have you prepared your ceremony food? What are you going to offer to her on your altar? Have you dressed and prepared your altar? You have to have an altar in your home with a ceremonial food. I don't care if it's bread and wine, bread and milk, bread and honey, whatever you want to do. It doesn't even have to be that. An apple, whatever calls to you, whatever is the best of your harvest right now is what she's looking for. So if you have a garden full of tomatoes, put them out. You have garlic, put it out. You have zucchini, put it out. You have apples, put it out. Whatever you have grown and just brought to fruition, put it out. Whatever you can make, put it out. So if all you can do, girl, is put out some bread and drizzle it with a little bit of honey and give her a little nip of your wine because you need the rest for all this, go for it. Now it's time to prepare your invocation. Now I gave you very detailed script of an invocation. 
very detailed, like three pages of how to do this shit, okay? What I want you to remember, are you ready? We're gonna keep this very simple. Keep it simple, sister, okay? Because I'm not gonna call you stupid. Keep it simple, sister. Opening, Hecate. Tonight I am at the crossroads, Hecate. I invite you forward. Okay? Praises and offerings. I come here in your exalted beautiness, beautifulness, however you want to say it, mysteriousness, magic, whatever calls to you, with this offering of my best to bring to you my intentions. And then you shoot from there. It's all you. Remember, as in every time you go to someone for a favor, thank her, thank her, thank her, close it up, tell her your wishes for new moon, back away from the offering. Do not turn your back to the crossroad. Walk in, back out is a form of reverence. You do not turn your back on Hecate, okay? Because I can't tell you what she's going to do, okay? So that is where we're sitting on the invocation, all your promptings, all the things you want to work on. Next, offerings and ritual items. Okay, so what are you good at? I gave you a whole group of listings of recipes. I gave you my Hecate oil my bread salt. So if you get a loaf of bread, you can sprinkle it. But let me tell you about some of the offerings I've given her because I think that'll help you a little more. Okay. So my first offering was a small mesh sack filled with mugwort, a piece of my hair, my intentions, and my cancer diagnosis. That was my first ever offering to Hecate. Now, this was sealed with menstrual blood. Taken to the crossroads. After I did an in-depth ritual on the floor of my home at the lowest level. That was my first offering. Second offering was a beautiful pine cone that I harvested from my yard. Wrapped in mugwort to make her look like a doll. I was very proud of this. Gave her some corn hair. And I wrapped her with a, a key that I found, a found key, and I sat her on a scroll of my intentions. It was my second offering to Hecate. Several alterings since have been bound twigs from my hedge tree, tied with ribbons of black and red, sealed with ink and wax from a candle that I had made for her on my altar, tied with mugwort vines. And most recently, and what will be going to the crossroads tonight, are pieces from my apple tree that has recently fallen, bound with twine from my hedgerow, with six scrolls of my written intentions, and the hospital bands that I hold as a reminder of my experience over the past year. With that offering, I will have a fire at the crossroads. I have permission. It's from a, it's in front of a person's home that I know very well. So I will be having a small fire in a cauldron there tonight at midnight and I will be burning them and I will be giving them to her tonight. On dark moon, I will do the same offering in my cauldron because I have plenty of bands. And I continue to write from tonight till dark moon my experiences. When you stepped into Hecate and you sat at those two stone seats, what were you told? What have you seen since then? You really need to think about this. This is a serious, serious process. If you want 
big magical results and you want direction in this exercise, you need to move to purpose at new moon. This is not a drill. This is big magic. And big magic takes big work. So you may be sitting there going, I can't do this. I have work tomorrow. Your work is now. Your magic is now. It will not be tomorrow. It will not be the next day. It will not be a year from now. If you started this process, you're in this sacred circle. And your magic is now. You are in the liminal as we speak. We went there together. I am leaving on dark moon. I can't live here anymore. I can visit, but I can't live here anymore. It hurts too bad. And for some of you, the pain that you live with every day needs to end at some point. So many of you are fighting battles that you are not brave enough to name. You are dealing with ghosts that know every inch of your insecurities. Your traumas are screaming at a monumental rate and you can't get away from them. Every time you try to run, they run just as fast. Unlike Peter Pan, your shadow is sown to you. And until you use the torch to align it, it will continue to chase you. And it will be uncomfortable, it will be deafening, and it eventually will smother your magic. If you don't own your shadow, your shadow will own you. Speaking from personal experience, trauma does not go away. It grows. Shame can only be lifted when secrets are told in safe spaces. You, my sister, are in the liminal. With Hecate, she is a safe space. Stop running. Sit still. Listen to the silence. Because as soon as you listen to the silence, you will find the strength to pursue the answers. Hecate has saved me personally and many women I know. Not because she's the only way. Because she gives the most amazing spiritual toolbox. You are so much stronger than you know. You will continue to amaze yourself at how strong you are until you don't have any other choice but to believe it. There's a lot of rah, rah, rah in this world. Stop being the rah, rah, rah. Put your foot down, bang your stick, and claim your space. The Horde needs more women, more women who are sacred, more women who are strong, more women who are authentic. Authenticity does not grow everywhere. It is not a garden in everyone's life. Authenticity is kept in a beautiful, gated, magical garden. And you have to be brave enough to walk in and pick it. Not something everyone has. So tonight, as I close this Zoom, I'm going to shut off the camera. And we're going to do a little meditation. And maybe it's not so much a meditation, but so much as a walk. Because tonight, I don't want you to feel like you're alone. And I want you to feel like I'm there. And I want you to feel like we're all there. And I don't ever want you to be afraid. So tonight, I'm going to give you a little something to think about when you're walking to the crossroads. And hopefully tomorrow, when I wake up, I will see so many comments on this video on YouTube or this video on Facebook or you writing my email that tells me how amazing your trip to the crossroads were. So after I'm done speaking, I'm going to end the video. But I just want to tell you, 
I'm so proud of you for coming this far. This took courage. And you are so much more courageous than you give yourself thought for. Remember, you're magical because you fucking say you are. Now sit back in your chair. We're going to take a few minutes and let's do this. Tonight, as the moon is full within your heart, almost barren from the sky, you are going to step outside your home. And you are going to travel to your crossroads moment. With each step, you're going to feel the beat of your heart till it feels like mother, maiden, crone. So I, mother, maiden, crone. So I, mother, maiden, crone. So I. And as you walk to this crossroads, you're going to be holding your offering in one hand, your invocation in the other, and you're going to go to the crossroads and read aloud your invocation. Hopefully it will come from a deep, deep, deep part of your cauldron that you will never, ever knew existed, filled with fire sacredness, and love like you've never felt before. I want you to breathe in. And when you breathe out, I want you to tell the North to hear your cry. North, hear my cry, mother maiden crone. I want you to breathe in again. West, hear my cry, mother maiden crone. South, hear my cry, mother maiden crone. Finally, west. West, hear my cry, mother maiden crone. As I stand here in the center of this space, I call Hecate to this place. Come see me. Please come see me as I am as I have been and as I will be. Weave me as the tri-aspected woman goddess living incarnate vision of what you entailed me to be. Hold me. Give me strength as I read you my intentions. As you're there and she embraces you, no, we are all standing behind you to hold you up when your are, knees are weak and your valor is strong. This is my blessing to you tonight as you go to this crossroad. I pray in Hecate's name, the goddess bestows on you all the direction you need, want, and desire. This that all. May you be magic tonight and always, and may it magnify to levels you could never imagine.